Thanks again, CMAC. Great job. Okay, our, our next speaker, um, I'll introduce him while he's setting up, is Jugman Choi of SK Hynix, one of the world leaders uh, in memory. He's going to talk about disaggregated memory. And then this is for the clicker. This is your microphone. That's for your clicker. Make some updates here. Oh, all right. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jongmin Choi, and uh, I'm a, a memory system architect at SK Hynix. Uh, so today, uh, as you can see here, uh, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, our uh, CXL disoriented memory solution. All right, so uh, here is our agenda for uh, this presentation. So uh, first, I'm going to talk about uh, some motivations, in particular some challenges in uh, today's data center, uh, why we should focus on the CXL disoriented memory system. Uh, then uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the Niagara, uh, Charles said in uh, his presentation, uh, which is our uh, CXL disoriented memory prototype. And also I will explain two uh, powerful user cases of the Niagara, which can uh, mitigate above challenges. And next, I will uh, briefly explain our research items for uh, hardware assist feature of Niagara. And I will end this presentation with an introduction uh, to our next step. All right, so um, let's talk about uh, the challenges ahead when we are expanding uh, our system memory. So, you know, uh, the volume of data grows uh, exponentially, so we need more cores, and it requires a continued increase in memory bandwidth and capacity. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, due to some various reasons, including uh, implementation cost and signal integrity issues, the gap between uh, such a requirement and uh, platform capability is growing. So. Uh, basically, you know, we need a new approach, and we believe that the CXL-based memory expansion is a decent solution to address these issues. And uh, CXL can also, you know, enable uh, the memory disintegration system beyond uh, memory expansion. All right, so uh, from now on, I'm going to talk about the challenges that uh, today's data center is facing. So uh, the first challenge is that uh, the memory utilization of the compute cluster uh, varies time to time based on uh, the working size. But uh, you know, due to the uh, inflexible nature of uh, cloud hardware platform, uh, as shown on the uh, left, left figure, uh, some memory resources uh, may underutilize, uh, leading to memory stranding. Uh, you know, uh, memory is a costly resource in uh, today's data center. So the memory stranding due to uh, over-provisioning uh, causes a significant resource waste in uh, today's data center. And also, uh, there can be a temporary skew in uh, memory usage causing a uh, data spill, as you shown on the right side. Uh, so the, you know, storage swap uh, can lead to uh, system performance degradation. 
Okay, so this is a, a second challenge. So uh, a distributed computing system can be a powerful solution for uh, handling large-scale uh, AI applications, in particular, you know, the emergence of generative AI. But uh, uh, I think it is very important to, that, uh, to note that uh, there can be a, a data transfer overhead between uh, multiple nodes, and also, uh, you know, there is a duplication of uh, shared data between multiple nodes, and it can increase uh, the local memory pressure in each node. So um, up to this point, we have looked two issues of today's data center, and now uh, let's explore a solution to uh, address these uh, challenges. All right, so uh, we propose a CXL-based disaggregated memory solution that support memory pooling and memory sharing capabilities. So memory pooling can uh, mitigate uh, memory stranding and data spill issues by sharing uh, disaggregated memory resources between uh, multiple load. And uh, as I will uh, explain about it later, we support a solution that uh, can uh, dynamically allocate memory resources to each node uh, at runtime. And uh, the second, the memory sharing can uh, eliminate data transfer overhead and also uh, data duplication by sharing data or the object uh, between multiple nodes. So yeah, as I said, uh, Niagara is a 4U FJ-based CXL disorder to the memory prototype and up to four host servers can be connected and uh, the Niagara supports up to four channel DDR4 DIMMs and the maximum memory capacity is one terabyte. Uh, you can see the Niagara specification uh, as you shown on the uh, left table. You know, uh, this is a FJ-based prototype, so the performance is a uh, little bit lower than ASIC or product level, but uh, even though we were able to achieve a meaningful result uh, through our uh, benchmark experiment, and I will show you that uh, result in uh, following pages. Okay, so Niagara support memory pooling and sharing capability and also support uh, some hardware assist feature and I will also discuss about it later. Uh, the figure on the right side is uh, our Lex scale system with uh, Niagara platform. So uh, as I said, Niagara can connect up to uh, four host servers, so and uh, yeah, actually I'd like to invite you to our uh, demo booth to uh, see the real uh, Rex scale system in action. Uh, okay, so um, from now on, I will uh, introduce two uh, powerful use cases of uh, CXL disaggregated uh, memory that can overcome the challenges we discussed. So first, uh, let's, dip, uh, let's dive into the memory pooling. Uh, Niagara support dynamic capacity service. Uh, uh, it is a hardware software integrated solution for uh, memory pooling. And this is, uh, is a solution that can uh, dynamically allocate the memory resources to host at runtime. I mean, uh, without any system reset or reboot. Uh, as you may know, DCS is very similar to the DCD, the Dynamic Capacity Device feature described in a CXL 3.1 specification. And you know, the one of the differences is that DCD is a fabric manager uh, driven system, but uh, the DCS is just a host driven system. So uh, the DCS is our uh, very initial version to support uh, memory pooling capability. Uh, and as I'll talk about later, but uh, we are also working on a DCD design, which complies uh, yeah, with the CXL specification. Uh, anyway, we, were, uh, we have demonstrated that uh, the memory utilization can be improved with our uh, DCS solution. 
And uh, the bottom layer, you can see the uh, hardware software architecture of DCS. So uh, the left side is uh, software architecture for DCS. So uh, on uh, each node, uh, you know, the memory pooling daemon uh, can monitor uh, the free memory space of the VM. And uh, the free memory is running low. The daemon requests memory allocation to uh, VM scheduler located in the controller node or the master node. And then the VM scheduler can instruct uh, also the memory allocation request to uh, the VM manager of the node where the VM is located to, yeah, to uh, allocate the memory. Uh, after that, the VM manager uh, provides the allocated CXL memory to the real VM, but if uh, the CXL memory is insufficient, then uh, it can also request memory allocation to the hardware device, uh, the, our uh, Niagara platform. Uh, and uh, actually, the process of uh, deallocating mechanism is very similar to that. Uh, so, uh, and the right side is uh, uh, hardware architecture uh, for uh, the DCS. So uh, the pooled memory manager, the PMM, uh, can communicate with the host using uh, the mailbox uh, to allocate or deallocate CXL memory regions uh, based on the host request. And uh, if some memory regions are allocated to the specific host, then the PMM can uh, update the host ID or the ownership information of that uh, memory region to uh, memory section table. Uh, so that the memory protection unit, the MPU, can detect or drop some unauthorized CXL mem traffic to the specific memory region. Uh, yeah. We also have a secure erasure, which can do zeroing or uh, randomizing to the specific uh, memory region due to you know, some security issue uh, based on the user request. OK, uh, you can see uh, the uh, evaluation result of memory pooling. And uh, actually, we collaborated with uh, members uh, to uh, develop this uh, solution and also evaluate the performance of the uh, memory pooling capability using uh, Cloud Suite benchmark. Uh, and we demonstrated that even an FJ based uh, memory system can uh, mitigate performance loss uh, due to uh, swap memory usage instead of uh, MVME. So uh, spelling the, the bottom line the spilling 20% of data to Niagara outperforms a uh, spill to MVME by up to 2.5 times. So in other words, if uh, Niagara can provide 20% of uh, CXL memory to host, then uh, we actually we can uh, dramatically improve the system performance uh, in this uh, benchmark scenario. Uh, the table on the right side shows the result of uh, improved memory utilization when uh, the DCS is enabled to Kubernetes compared to the baseline. So uh, you can see that uh, both uh, baseline and uh, DCS enabled Kubernetes have the same local and uh, CXL memory capacity. But when the page rank workload is running, the DCS enabled Kubernetes can improve uh, memory utilization by about 35% uh, compared to the baseline, you know, as the uh, disaggregated memory resources are dynamically allocated. Okay, this is our uh, second use case, uh, memory, per, uh, memory sharing. So uh, multiple hosts can access Niagara as a shared memory region. So if uh, some data should be uh, shared between multiple nodes. It can be right into the CXL shared memory region from the writer node, and then a reader node can read that shared data or shared object from that memory region. So you know, it's very similar to that SWMR uh, mechanism. And this enables uh, data sharing between multiple nodes without 
uh, data transfer overhead via network, and also data duplication can be uh, prevented as there is no need for uh, shared object or shared data copy. So yeah, you, you can also see the evaluation result of memory uh, sharing, and we are also uh, we also collaborate with members to uh, evaluate the performance of memory sharing uh, capability. So the left graph shows a benchmark result for Ray, <coughs> and you know the Ray is open source based uh, distributed computing framework, and by uh, applying uh, Niagara. <clears throat> memory sharing capability to Ray, uh, we can eliminate node-to-node -node, uh, data transfer overhead, uh, resulting in uh, a performance improvement of up to 5.9 times compared to the native Ray. And the graph on the right side is Niagara-based Spark join uh, performance evaluation result that yeah, we designed. So we demonstrated that the performance can be improved by up to 1.8 times compared to the baseline by uh, eliminating the shuffle operation between uh, multiple loads. Uh, and in addition to uh, these two uh, use cases, we are also actively uh, investigating other uh, hardware use cases, hard hardware uh, assist feature to enhance uh, shell disaggregated memory system efficiency. <clears throat> All right, so as you can see here, uh, Niagara support memory pooling and sharing function, as well as other hardware assist features. So first, uh, block data management that can uh, reduce data migrant overhead by moving or copying data within uh, shell memory. And I think, yeah, something like uh, VM live migration could be useful, but we are still looking at the other use cases. And second is a snapshot, and it is a function that directly save or restores data between a shell memory and storage device. And we saw that the host CPU IO handling burden can be reduced by uploading this snapshot <coughs> function to the uh, memory device. The last but not least is memory failure prediction. So you know the uh, CXL disaggregated memory system connect uh, multiple hosts. Uh, it means uh, memory failure can have a significant uh, negative impact on the system. So we believe that memory failure prediction can improve reliability of uh, CXL disaggregated memory system. Okay, so apart from the research items introduced here, we are uh, uh, exploring, also exploring various other hardware assist features. So if you have any uh, interest about these items, uh, we are always open to collaborate with you. Okay, so our next step involves preparing uh, Niagara 2 which will be available by end of this year. So Niagara 2 is a 2 based CXL uh, disaggregated memory prototype, which can connect up to eight host servers, and we plan to uh, support, uh, as I said, the DCD feature described in uh, Shexel spe specification. So if device support DCD capability, the server cluster configuration can be changes, as shown on the right side. So above all, we are very much uh, looking for collaboration with uh, industry partners uh, to enable the Shexel hardware software ecosystem. All right, so lastly, I'd like to introduce our uh, live demo. So through our live demo, uh, we are showcasing the dynamic memory allocation for VMs across uh, four different host, no host servers. Uh, you know, the, unfortunately, today is the last day, but yeah, if you visit our demo booth, uh, the number A8, uh, you can see the uh, Niagara live demo uh, in, in more detail uh, with the uh, real Lex carrier system, as you shown on the right side. Uh, all right, so that's all I have for this presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.